You know, it's the top of the hour, and uh, I wish there were closer to the almost 110 of us. Oh, look, there are a few more people popping on. <laughs> I'll drag my feet in this slow, I'll make it a slow one minute in, in, uh, introduction to today's session and hope that a few more people come in during that time. So, of course, you have found yourself in session four of Deep Adaptation in Times of Collapse, an online learning series that is punctuated by six Saturday sessions, six 90-minute Saturday sessions, uh, two of which happened in May, then in June, and there'll be two more in July. Two more. And there's Laura. Hi. All right. So we've got a few more people on. We've got looking like we're getting up to about 10. And I'll still uh, just kind of ease us into a long <laughs> introduction here and see if more people will come. Today is a unique uh, session amongst those six that I just described. Today we will have a uh, special guest at the end of the 90-minute standard session. There's a one-hour, uh, of course, entirely optional session with a, a person who's uh, become just an obvious, really potent ally and, uh, and a friend uh, for me is Jay Early will be joining us. And Jay, I, uh, you may all have... I uh, had time to read a couple of the links that I put in to the last email to you about Jay's work. He's a longtime therapist and facilitator, uh, group consultant and facilitator. So Jay will be joining us at 1030 Pacific time at the end of the standard session today for an hour. And he'll be talking about his his normal body of work with working with groups, which is focused around the self-healing and um, group facilitation work of uh, internal family systems. And I'm not going to say much about it now. I'll let him speak about that later. It's not meant to be uh, the primary focus, I'm imagining, of most of the support groups that might come from this type of audience that's, that's in this webinar. Uh, but I think it's an, um, quite a remarkable body of work. I've found it to be some of the best and easiest and least threatening uh, shadow work and trauma healing work that I've ever seen. So uh, the other piece that I'd like to just kind of set the stage for when Jay comes to join us is his recent proposal to create what he was originally calling a social movement We'll hear today how that might have evolved and, and he might be calling it something different, but essentially it's, it's to create a very loosely affiliated uh, bunch of support groups around the world, if possible. He'd love to take it as large as it wants to go, uh, to have empowered people with really strong tools at their disposal to move whatever is important to them forward. So today our focus is going to be on our reconnection with each other, reconnection with other people. And just a, a very brief, I'm sorry if this is too many repetitions of this, but I want, I want to make sure that uh, there, if there are new people to the call that you can get a little bit of context as well. I started out this body of work. My name is Dean Walker and I live in Southern Oregon and have been working uh, really constantly for the past five years since writing my first book called The Impossible Conversation, really to grapple with the, the issues of collapse of human and earth systems as, <laughs> as we are in this webinar really just grabbed the opportunity to put together this six session series because I saw an opening uh, through the Deep Adaptation Forum, which many or all of you may be already connected with. 
if you haven't connected with that did deep adaptation forum, which was recently created by Jem Bendel, uh, academic in the UK, I would recommend highly dive in, go check it out. It's easy to find on the internet and you'll, you may well find uh, uh, one or two or more of the subgroups within that forum to be of interest, a way to find a connection with other people, with kindred spirits. The, at the foundation of my book, again, The Impossible Conversation, or my website and other creations in that domain, um, I kept asking myself, what happened to get us to this state of predicament? And the answer kept coming back, we've disconnected. And uh, that the, for ease of conversation, I've broken that up into a few different ways of talking about it. We've disconnected from the web of life itself, We've disconnected from the primary sources of meaning in human life. And those, I would say, would, could be called deeper self, others, and earth. So today, the focus will mostly be on our connect, a reconnection with others. And to speak for one last moment about the body of work, in order for something to be of use and to be really put into play in this body of work on the website and webinars, my, myself and, and the um, friends and allies that I have to keep suggesting various practices that, that people might find useful, we all do our best to evaluate, is this something that does some amount of reconnection? with one of those elements I've just been describing. So that's just the barest minimum of a, a little update or recap of the context of this work. And now just a couple of moments about this Jim Bendel uh, Deep Adaptation Forum connection. Uh, in just the past year, Professor Bendel has gone viral with a number of his writings. And again, I'm pretty sure that most of you on this call would be very familiar with his work. Uh, let's just say uh, there, there is a tremendous amount of connection and overlap between my way of putting together this, this conversation and the way that Jim Bendel does. Instead of using reconnection, he comes up with what he calls the four R's, which uh, <laughs> now I'm not going to be able to remember them off the top of my head. But again, I would just recommend highly that you, uh, if you haven't already, dive into Jem Bandel's own website and blog and into his writings. Uh, you'll also find a, a number of interviews with him and talks on YouTube. So if you haven't, been familiarized with his body of work, um, please do. It's, it's remarkable and, and uh, I've just got to say I'm, I'm so excited about the possibility uh, particularly of this uh, deep, adapt deep Adaptation Forum. Uh, it's an extraordinary opportunity. Um, Catherine and I were just speaking before we started to record here about what an opportunity, what a remarkable opportunity it is to be in a safe environment where there's no argument, there's no polarization, there's none of the usual drama and, and really sickness uh, that I see so much in the regular world. To be in an environment like this, even for 90 minutes every couple of weeks, is um, rejuvenating for me. So. I hope it is for you as well. And, and uh, Catherine also reminded me of a, a quote from a very good friend of mine here in the Southern Oregon area. He's a, a Native American um, indigenous elder in this area. He was speaking at a conference that I went to last year and 
his last words to us in the conference, in the body of the conference was, um, and excuse me, I'm just gonna put it into my own words. He was telling us to use this time. To use this time. There's clearly a, um, a finite nature to this quality of life, this pace of life, this relative normalcy of life that's going on right now. And um, what his admonition was to us is use this time that still has some look and feel of normalcy to us and use it to do, if I can leap back into what I was just describing to you, to do our best to reconnect with the web of life. And for each of us, that will be a different path, but at, at its core, it's obviously the same. And I so appreciated um, the sobriety of his words. And I, I just bring that to you and uh, ask that you do with it what you will. And then uh, I'd like for us all to, in the small breakout groups today, to be able to share with one another what that looks like in terms of our reconnection with other people. How's it going for us? How is it going for you? Is it going as well as you'd like? Are there practices that you'd like to see yourself uh, include from here on and so on? Without uh, too much further ado, uh, I, I invite us to, to now jump in. I think I'd like to uh, shift. I'm, fine, I'm finding myself compelled to, to shift state. I am often concerned i'll i'll default to a i'll get into this concerned state of being in as this these calls begin because 90 minutes is a blink of an eye and um, i can get on a roll and get into talking too much and also getting into um, a mode usually a head and linear mode that is um not as conducive as I would like. And so I'd, I'd like to ask all of us, and certainly myself included, to take a few deep breaths. And in, within those deep breaths, to allow the field around our hearts to expand with each inhale and again with each exhale. So a few unforced deep breaths expanding the field of your heart. All right, thank you. And I would like to get us into small groups as soon as possible. And I'd like to just remind us of a couple of recent articles or occurrences that I think are worthy of attention. I don't know if I'll go another session without reminding us of the recent report of the, the UN body that studies uh, species diversity on the planet and their recent report, their first and only report to date uh, that was just released before the last session. And I, I'm just uh, inclined to remind us to, to keep it somewhere on the field of our attention for some period of time. It's, it's an extraordinary document. I'm asking that we just keep it in the field of our attention, at least during our time together through July, 
I think that's probably enough just to, to remind and to plant a seed of it. Another is, uh, I, I've been following the news in Brazil for the past year since Bolsonaro was, um, was elected in. And I would just also like to invite those who are, who engage their attention at that kind of global or international political level uh, or international environmental level to just have your attention out there for things that really catch your attention, um, that they show up for you in some way that, that holds a, a, a heft, that holds a, a significance, a gravitas for your attention. And so that's the, really the spirit with which I'm asking to just include that today. And if an, indeed you are one of those people, uh, like I am, that my attention easily goes to the global or to the international level, know that that's something that we can share about together, if nowhere else, on the Facebook page that we have set up for just that kind of posting, uh, which is called Deep Academy. And so if you go to Deep Academy and just ask to join, um, you'll soon be approved, no doubt, and we can start to post together about uh, that kind of issue. And I'll mention probably a couple more before the, this session is over. And I mean no judgment about anyone who does not register their attention at that global or international scale. If you are far more comfortable and it's more natural for you to engage your attention and intent in the world at a more local scale, even down to the most intimate. Obviously, the most intimate would be in your own, within your own body. That is completely valid. I am not at all trying to add extra value <laughs> to somehow having your attention on the global scale. Uh, it just happens to be a seedling I'd like to plant at that global scale. There's a, an article that I will be including when I post the recording of this session. Uh, actually, a number of articles. It's going to be another kind of dense one. This one is a, by a, an author who is of some renown now in the Collapse Aware community. His name is Roy Scranton. And <clears throat> Roy uh, d did a a book review of Bill McKibben's Falter, which is his newest book, and Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells, which I think we've mentioned here and undoubtedly you already know about. It's, it's quite an extensive uh, article, and I, again, will include the link if you don't already have it. And um, I would just like to include a, just a brilliant paragraph. He's, he's a very talented author. And it brings it back to a more intimate scale uh, after I've just been talking about the international scale. And it also, to me, goes right to the core of what appears to be almost a, a psychosis, almost a, a collective sickness. For sure that we have in the United States, I can't speak for other nations, but we, we are just terrible at coming together in a way that addresses that which matters most. We come together for the Super Bowl just fine, thank you very much. We have hundreds of millions of people watching that game and, and many other games like it. And we have a, a ridiculously small presence with regard to holding conversations about what truly matters on an existential level in this country. So I'd like to just speak uh, from, read a little bit from Roy Scranton in that review and uh, to kind of nudge us back closer to um, our consideration of our own personal practices and particularly our own relationships with others and our uh, connection with one another. 
So the stories we tell ourselves matter. As beings whose social existence is structured by symbolic reasoning, we comprehend our lives through collectively agreed upon narratives about what is important, what to attend to, what reality itself is and means. These narratives undergird our politics, inform our notions of identity, and give shape to our desires. They tell us what is possible and what is not, what is known and what is inconceivable, what must be true and what cannot be. It is therefore essential that we always keep testing our narratives against reality and always be willing to edit, revise, or even wholly rewrite them in light of new information. Now, I've just got one more paragraph, so thank you for your patience with this. this that was specific, that was kind of a general swath of Roy Scranton speaking about the narratives that we create the context with which we hold our world together. And in his description of David Wallace Wells, one of the two authors of books that he's reviewing here, he's, he's comparing David Wallace Wells, who's a uh, kind of a young guy, and uh, I really enjoy his way of speaking and his way of writing. He's, he's a very interesting character. You'll, you can find videos about him endlessly on YouTube and his books and articles about the environment uh, have also gone viral and are extraordinary. But he's a, he's a city guy. He uh, is the first one to tell you that he has no real connection with the earth. Amazing for a guy who's now really made his, his stand in the world about uh, informing the world about the current state of affairs in our environment. And so I'd like to introduce, I'd like to read you Roy Scranton's introduction of David Wallace Wells. And I'm, I'm reading it to you because I find it a perfect and, and a bit, one of the easier kind of um, examples of how really the challenge is if, if, we aren't, if we aren't very good at talking with other people and if we're even worse at setting up support groups to move to move forward on existentially important issues. <laughs> it's just an extraordinary challenge when somebody is just enough different that I can start to feel uncomfortable as I approach them with even the slightest invitation to have a conversation. So I'll stop mashing this up and talking about it. Roy Scranton describing David Wallace Wells. David Wallace Wells is of another generation. He has seven, excuse me, he was seven when Bill McKibben pronounced the end of nature and belongs to one of the first cohorts that grew up knowing it lived in a world transformed by global warming. He quotes, I'm not an environmentalist. I don't even think of myself as a nature person. Indeed, Wallace Wells asserts that he wouldn't mind losing much of what we think of as nature, so long as we could go on living as we have in the world left behind. The reason this self-described, gadget-loving, beef-eating, Bitcoin-buying, human chauvinist has written a book about climate change is that we can't. We can't go on living as we have. So, I just appreciate that. It's... Uh, not nearly as tough as talking about someone who's a complete denier on the polar end away from where my stance is, for instance. 
but it's just enough difference that I, um, <laughs> I notice in myself as I just scan my own system in reading that, that there's enough difference that there's discomfort that, that wells up as I imagine a conversation with David Wallace Wells. I invite you to do the same. I imagine you might do that as you look at various members of your family or friends that you just can't talk with certain about certain topics and so on. That's really what I'm getting at. And thank you for your patience in, in listening to that. You know, I'm gonna do a, a really quick thing. I, I'm a long time face-to-face in-person program leader and participant. I really just love the, the opportunity to be face-to-face -face with one another. And we don't have time to all of us do a ch full check-in with each other. But what I'd like to do is uh, just quickly presence ourselves, say our name, where we're from, and two words that say something about what you're bringing to today's call. Could be, how's your heart? Could be answering that. So uh, I'm Dean Walker, I'm from Southern Oregon, and I'm bringing um, excitement and a bit of grief. And uh, Catherine, would you go next? Hi, I'm Catherine Hart at Suarez. Oh, <laughs> nearly got in trouble with my husband. I'm in Warwickshire in the United Kingdom. And what I bring to today is an open heart and optimism. Can I choose who goes next, Dean? Yeah, please. Yeah. Laura Parker. Hi, I'm Laura Parker and I'm from Northern California and um, I'm baking a pie because today I'm celebrating my 60th birthday and <laughs> so I have a bunch of people coming over later today and so I'm celebrating community today and connection. This is how I'm connecting. Great, thank you. And Laura, would you pick the next person, please? Jillian, will you go next? Hi, can everybody hear me? Um, I'm Jillian Sackett. I'm from outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, although my husband and I are looking to relocate, as Dean knows, um, somewhere where we can root the kids more um, into the earth. I today am bringing with me um, acceptance, but um, reluctant acceptance, I guess, especially as uh, for the kids. Um, Lee, I guess, would you want to take a turn? Thank you, Jillian. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm in Northern California as well. Hi, hi, Laura. Um, what I'm bringing to the table is struggling. It's been a tough couple of weeks. Uh, and openness. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Would you choose someone for us, Lee? How about, uh, I can't see, Jane? Ian, I can't read it. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Ian. I'm from London. I'm calling from London. And um, what am I bringing today? I suppose kind of like a heaviness and uh, curiosity. And I'll choose Michael. Ian, thank you. Thanks, Ian. My name is Michael Russell. I'm from Fargo, North Dakota, in the United States. And bringing a lot of patience and calm today. So that's what I got. Uh, I'll call on Elaine. You're muted, Elaine. Hmm. Elaine, you were muted. We didn't hear anything you said. Yeah, Elaine, I'm trying. Oh, there we go. You had the ultimate control. Um, I'm Elaine Pierce, uh, Sonoma County in Northern California, and um, I'm feeling kind of unsteady. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Would you choose someone next? Lee, 
uh, Lee, did you go yet? Yeah. Lee did? Okay, I've got to get to the next screen in a second. Uh, how about uh, Jay Cassidy? I don't know why. Uh, it looks like you're still muted. Jay Cassidy? I did? Yeah. No, no, Elaine, you're fine. You know, uh, Jeremy, I, I can't hear you. I it, try again. Okay, we'll keep keep working on it, Jeremy. And, and if it starts to work, let us know, and we'll get you. We'll come back to you. Okay. All right. Thanks. You may want to check in via chat. How about if we go to Susan? Hello, I'm Susan. Uh, I am. Hi, Jillian. Um, I'm from Florida, and I'm currently living in Costa Rica. And I'm bringing with me wonder of all the experiences that I'm having since I've started this journey of being lapse aware. And a mixture of um, a mixture of pessimism and optimism. Great, thank you. And uh, if you could uh, go ahead and choose the next person. Um, Laura, Keith Rollage, did you go? Hi, I'm Laura Keith Rollage. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I am bringing um, peace because I'm sitting in my garden in my gazebo which is my favorite place to be, um, in my home anyway. <laughs> and I'm bringing a little bit of optimism today, um, probably because everything is growing and it's, I can just, I just feel soaked in life today. Thank you, and would you choose someone next? Um, uh, June, have you gone yet? Hi, everybody. I'm June. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. And um, I'm bringing it a boundless possibility. I'm really just in touch with the recent news that 66 million trees were planted in one day in India. And um, our untapped potential as a species that can arise to meet the crisis that we're facing once we acknowledge it. So I'm bringing a boundless possibility. All right, thank you, June. And if we haven't checked in with you yet, would you, uh, Jeremy, do you have sound yet? Oh, one, two, hello. Hey. Hey. As an engineer, I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I've got to <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's part of the mystery. I was, I was going to just bring up, just bring in the mystery of um, that every moment is unknown. And I thought I was in the known there of my microphone working, and suddenly it wasn't. And uh, suddenly sent me into a, a turmoil and a, a cataclysm. But um, yeah, so it's the unknown. Um, and uh, the mystery. Beautiful, thank you. I'm glad we got the sound to connect with you. Is there anyone else who has not yet checked in? All right, we're gonna do a slightly longer check-in now. We're gonna break into uh, groups of three. What I'd like you to do is uh, check in starting with if you've been on the last couple of calls we've had the opportunity to start with sensation and something from our feeling body meaning uh the, instead of just launching into words and recounting from our thoughts the invitation is to start by naming three sensations that you're aware of do it quickly and um it should be very simple you know, like right now, I can feel the coolness of the desk that I'm sitting at. I can feel the coolness of the air, and I can feel my backside in the chair. 
then when I talk about feelings, uh, my feeling body or the feelings that are registering in my system, I can speak about, um, I have a, a little bit of excitement, um, some, so some joy, and also uh, just a, a waft of sadness or grief. So it could, should be that quickly that you go through this, this first step, which is as you are checking in, a little bit about sensation, a little bit about your inner experience of feelings that are occurring in your body, and then uh, I would like you to, and hopefully you're jotting this down, just these are little punch list items. Uh, this is a brief report on the, your state of being and what concerns you at this time, what inspires you at this time, and whatever the most current version of the very first exercise I asked you to do at the beginning of this series, which is to articulate what matters most to you. So none of these should be a long conversation. You'll, you're going to be having uh, approximately two minutes for your sharing with each other. So that'll be a total of six minutes of sharing in your group of three. And I'm going to pet, you know, paste on a little bit of extra time, so I won't call us all back till nearly eight minutes. So you have a little wiggle room in there, but not much. So in your group of three, I'd like you to ask, I'd like to ask you to set up a timekeeper who lets you know that you have about 30 seconds left in your two minutes, and they also let you know when your two minutes is done. And I'm just going to quickly run through the little punch list of items to share in this check-in. So it's starting with sensation and feeling, then a brief report on your state of being, what concerns you at this time, what inspires you at this time, and what is your most current version of what matters most to you? Any questions? I, I couldn't quite hear what someone said. Can you run through it one more time? Absolutely. So it's, uh, you're starting with sensations and feelings, both very, very brief. Then a brief report on your state of being at large. You know, for instance, I'll just demo, demo that as quickly as I can. My state of being right now is I'm feeling remarkably um, grateful and grounded, excited, and just a little bit tired. And that's about all I would need to do is probably less than a minute, maybe even less than 30 seconds. Is that making sense on that part? Good. Then... Um, what concerns you at this time, what inspires you at this time, and your most current version of what matters most to you. Are we good? All right. Give me a moment. I'll get us into groups of three, and uh, with your permission, I'll join one of those groups, and uh, see you in a minute. Hi there. Hi. Laura, you're on mute. There we go. Okay. Would either of you like to begin? I'll begin. I'll, I'll warn you that my internet connection is unstable. I might disappear and, and then come back. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> sensation check in. I'm noticing that there's a fan blowing, uh, cooling the air. And I have a, a bit of pain in my hip. I'm wiggling around uh, dealing with the pain in my hip. And um, my inner experience is a little excitement and a little um, sort of eager to see what we can cook up together, sort of eagerness. 
And then um, what concerns me is uh, everything's at stake and it's up to us. And um, what inspires me is what I said earlier about there's untapped potential uh, in the human family. And um, if you're familiar, I just completed the landmark advanced course, if that means anything to, I, I know Dean, I think it, you, you're familiar, but Laura, it's a, it's just a, a course, three day course that wakes you up. And so I'm really present to the ways that I've been um, sort of sleepwalking. And so what inspires me right now is that I'm on this new threshold for my personal engagement with life, really inspired by that. And um, what matters most to me is um, uh, a recent, in that course I created the possibility that I would be a part of creating a team that was capable of and committed to holding on to and acting on a vision that we uh, use the climate crisis to bring forth a world that works for all. Okay, you have about 30 seconds. That's it for me. Okay. Well, thank you, June. <clears throat> Lovely. Um, I'll go next. Um, so I'm sitting here. I'm feeling hungry because I didn't eat my breakfast yet. <laughs> um, I am a little bit chill because we live in near the Rocky Mountains, and so mornings are still cool. Um, and I'm sitting in my gazebo. Um, in terms of feelings, this morning is good. I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty centered and embodied and happy that I know what those things mean. <laughs> there been times in my life when they, it was, they were just words. <laughs> um, and um, in terms of uh, the questions, my state of being right now is, is um, a, a very much a state of excitement because I'm embarking on a project that's been kind of incubating for a few months. And um, it, uh, I've had several meetings now with people and it looks like it may, we may start to kind of move it toward um, happening. And it has to do with kind of taking the work we're doing uh, with our um, eco grief um, support circle that, that we've been holding for a couple of years now, kind of taking it out into the wild wor wi wider world and seeing, seeing what happens. Um, we've, um, a, just show you briefly I was just I've been kind of I apologize Dean because I was sketching while you were t doing your intro but I was because <laughs> <laughs> um, it was inspiring me so this is this is kind of the concept mm. um, it's to yeah. have, have a kind of um, like a drape uh, like a wall wall of fabric and then with panels on it that are like pieces of art that um, we're going to get in touch with high school kids and community centers to have them uh, basically create kind of a one meter squared um, piece of art that kind of describes their thinking or their feeling about the earth and, and ecological collapse and climate change. Um, and the idea is to enter the spiral and to, in the center, there would be um, a few chairs, like maybe four chairs and a small table with some tea and, and um, a place for people to just come and talk about their ecological grief and um, just kind of do a pop-up healing circle, if you will. And um, just, you know, living in Calgary, which is a, heart of a bunch of oil activity, um, head office activity. It's, I, I feel really oddly um, excited to see who we get and 
and um, what kind of response we get, but it feels like the right time to kind of bring this out into the wider world. So um, that, that also covers what matters most to me <laughs> right now. Wonderful, thank you. Well, you both are really up to wonderful things. It's so great. Um, I had a chance to to share the words with you all in the in the demo that I did, and so <clears throat> I'm just taking a moment. I noticed that I, when I get engaged with this conversation that we're in today about reconnecting with others, um, there's a tremendous amount of grief for me because um, I, while there are many people I have the privilege of connecting with, like yourselves, and I am deeply grateful for that, I am also stunned by the escalation of disconnection that is available around the world. Um, it's been a confronting topic for me to dive into and to try and tease apart some useful distinctions and so on. So I'm, I'm a bit there today and I'm also excited uh, to have us all share the way we're sharing and um, and I'm also very excited to hear, hear from Jay and to see what y'all's reaction is to that. I'm going to hit the closing the rooms button, which is going to take me out of here. And um, then we'll soon return you to the main room as well. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Dean. How are you? <laughs> Sorry? How are you? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, I'm, I'm having, it's not really loneliness that I'm feeling today, but I do feel um, grief about our, what seems to be a, a global disease, but particularly in the States where we're so disconnected as, as a public at large. Yeah. So. I hear you. That's yeah. what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> all right. I believe that we are all back. So it can be said that the deep adaptation is a tight, is a way of saying the, uh, of articulating the inner work that uh, a concerned person could take on as they as they encounter a world with uh, larger and larger scale stressors that are occurring. It can also be said that what we're facing is something of a predicament or a dilemma, which, you know, uh, in my way of understanding that is that a dilemma or a predicament is really not offering us anything but adaptation. You know, we need to just kind of work around it, unlike a problem that might offer us the opportunity to come up with solutions. Predicaments and dilemmas do not offer obvious solutions. So I'm curious, in this next round of breakout, we'll again go into groups of three. And I would like to ask you to, at the individual level, articulate some example of your own dilemma or your own predicament that you're facing in some aspect of your life. And I'd like to ask you to, to share this with each other. You're gonna have more time this time. So you'll start by one at a time, uh, a person will disclose their dilemma or predicament at what scale, what, you know, whatever it is in your life that, that lives for you like that. 
and I'd uh, like to ask of you to take the first couple of minutes, and I'll make it clear how many minutes, we'll figure that out in just a moment. You'll take the first minute or so to describe, disclose your dilemma. Yes, articul articulate a predicament you are facing in your own life, exactly. So I'm asking for you to articulate and disclose that dilemma or that predicament, and then open it up to reflection and possible feedback from your other two small group mates. And this is meant to be something like a, it can be called a mastermind situation. Basically, it's a, a chance to get reflections, which are very, very useful in their own right, and then possibly suggestions that you may or may not have thought of or heard. And uh, please, listeners who are then contributing, keep checking in with the person who is the focus and make sure that the feedback is useful and um, that they are able to um, connect with you. Um, sometimes it can be kind of rapid fire feedback situation is what I'm trying to warn about. So uh, just keep checking in with each other about the pace of feedback and make sure that it's working for the focused person. And uh, we will be taking uh, five minutes for each person. So again, you'll need a timekeeper. I guess there's a, that, I guess that's enough said. I, I was going to say, if you don't know of a predicament in your life, if, if that's not something that easily comes to you, you could just speak what is an important project or idea that you'd like to move forward with in your life and in practices to, um, to grow. And uh, so if, if you're not comfortable or able to say a predicament or, or dilemma, you're certainly welcome to bring whatever challenging uh, self-assigned project that you've got going on. Is there anybody who's got a question with that? Um, June would like me to model? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, this episode of this of this webinar is an example of that. <laughs> so, um, if I were to model what I'm talking about, and I'll do it, uh, I'll do it quite a bit more quickly because I really want to get you into your groups. Um, my dilemma at this time, my predicament, is that I so want to connect with other people. It is very up for me in terms of which of the types of disconnection I want to be addressing in this time of my life, this is a huge one. Uh, I, I sometimes call it, this is the time of finding my people. You know, the, that admonition from my friend Aaron at the beginning that I mentioned, this is the time to, to gather people together and become a, as functional a support group as possible. So I've got that desire, I've got that clear notion of what it is to reconnect. And I have I live within a society that offers me precious few opportunities to connect with people. For whatever reason, the, the numbers of people who are available to this kind, to creating this kind of support group, this kind of tribe, this kind of, kind of conversation or study group um, tend to be few and far between. So that's my predicament. And what I would want my two partners to speak of with me is ideas they have. If you have a functioning support group, be it in your family, if you have any environment with other human beings in which you have a safe container to be able to speak about things that matter to you and of great import. I hope that you will be sharing them with your partners in this group. This, this, is, the, this is the juice. This is the coin of the realm, is for us to share what has been working for us in our individual lives with the possibility that it may resonate in someone else's. Is that enough of a modeling? Are you good? Okay, thank you. Thank you all so much. In just a moment, I'll get us back into groups of 
Let me make sure. Of three. And um, we'll see you in approximately 15 minutes. Might I suggest, Dean, since you stated your, would you go first and allow us to contribute to you? Okay, that's a great idea. I hadn't thought of it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And uh, I'm open to whatever you might like to reflect or suggest. I would like to suggest, to, can we take four minutes each and then we have three minutes left at the end so that we can allow whatever wants to emerge? Yes. You've, you've actually already guessed my um, covert strategy. <laughs> so who's good at timekeeping? Um, I can do that. And then you are going to go first, correct? Um, yes, but but I've I think I've already said what I needed to say. Yeah. If if either of you have reflections or suggestions, I'm so willing to go. So I have a qu clarifying question. I'm wondering um, when you're looking for connection, you you said that you already connect with lots of people in lots of ways. Do you have an awareness of what's missing? What what aspect of connection is missing for you? You're aware that there's something that you're longing for. Yeah. And um, you may or may not have an awareness of what some of the dimensions or the consequences of that are. But if you speak about it a little bit, we might be able to hone in on better um, strategies or um, reflections and feedback for you. Okay. I could articulate best I could in response to that. Um, could we just put a hold on that for a second and, and let Laura say what she says and then just we'll see. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the question that our, uh, the clarification that I would like is um, it sounds like you're what you may be looking for is more of a kind of face to face regular interaction like you know in the room kind of interaction um, and that you're not um, really able to cultivate that with at in the place that you're living right now is that correct it's it's challenging very challenging yeah yeah southern alberta <laughs> i mean southern southern oregon it's like where i live <laughs> yeah um and I'm a, and going to make the assumption that you have attempted different strategies to try and do that, and it's it's just not coming together. And so it might be helpful for us if you uh, talked about what some of those things are that you've tried. Yeah. And then see if we can offer any other insights. Yeah. Thanks. So I, I have had some success because I'm in some circles uh, that are process oriented and bonding oriented and, and personal growth oriented. And so those have worked to some degree, but it, it's a very, very limited population here. Um, the ones I'm looking for is really just, I, I live in a apartment complex that's huge, got like 600 people in it. And, um, I would like to just create a small gathering on a regular basis uh, that invites people to get more little by little as they feel more comfortable about it to engage in these conversations of what matters most and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm actually moving along with it. it it's, it's happening and I, have, I think I'll be having my first uh, couple of meetings um, after I get back from, from uh, uh, traveling in this coming uh, couple of weeks. So I, in this summer, I will, I will have my first couple of meetings. So it, it is 
possible. I did set the alarm. It did go off. And I'm really reluctant to take more time because I really want the two of you to have a good stretch of time. So thank you both so much. And I feel just great if one of you would start up. Okay. Um, so I do want to just make one contribution to your predicament. And that is what I found with our, our um, eco grief circle is um, a commitment to just host, holding space on a regular basis and um, that people seem to really love the idea of it being there, even if they're not able to attend. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just having that kind of um, just unconditional positive regard with respect to people uh, joining or not joining um, and being just kind of completely welcoming uh, when they do, um, I find that that's as much a part of the healing process as um, as the actual talking circle mm -hmm. is just people knowing that they're that that we're there and that they can come if they need to. So there's that sense of um, just beingness, you know. Um, in terms of my predicament, um, my biggest predicament right now in terms of living in the um, the great turning is just around navigating, and, and it sounds so banal, but just navigating financial stuff. Um, I um, have a lot of kind of what I actually refer to as PTSD around financial stuff because of some work situations that I was involved in and just some personal situations and I've been really trying to cultivate um, you know my my a lot of my personal self um, self soothing skills and stuff are driven by that because that's I find what triggers me the most, not that you know near term human extinction, but the fact that you know. I can't pay off that credit card or whatever. <laughs> um, and it's one of those things where I, I try and just go into a deep time perspective and, you know, do the best I can and try not to get too much of my self-worth tied up with it. But it's hard having to live in capitalism and, and end stage capitalism. And um, yeah, so that's me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm. I love your deep time strategy. That if you put it in a larger perspective that it really is a function of the larger system that we're a part of and I'm imagining that just acknowledging, like, even though you're in Canada, like in the United States, that more than half of half of families have less than $400 to deal with any emergency that comes up. And um, I'm imagining that that larger perspective is helpful yeah. to you. Do you have any strategies about wanting to intervene in for example, the credit card debt, is there a, as a side income that would support you in um, moving forward on that? Or do you have resources available? Well, really the only kind of saving grace that we have is that, you know, we, we have a house that has a mortgage, um, but it's in a place where the values are going up consistently so we have equity there that is always a cushion um and you know but I'm, I'm kind of quick approaching a point where i feel like you know given what i understand about the silver data um and especially with calgary being an oil centric economy that it's um 
it may be fast approaching time when we need to be looking at selling our, ho our home and, and getting ourselves A, out of debt and B, into a place where, um, you know, we have more ability to hopefully support ourselves in a, um, in the chaos that's coming. So, and that means community as much as land. So we're, we're coming up on the end of your time. I'm sorry I didn't give you a, a warning. Nope, that's fine. Is, um, this is just a super brief thing and I, I don't mean it to be rough. Um, I have no idea what the Canadian version of bankruptcy might be in terms of what's available, but I can tell you having uh, exercised that particular privilege in the United States uh, a couple of times, it was life-saving for me. Yeah. And so um, I don't know what your stance is about that. I don't mean to be you know, pushy in any way about it, uh, but I know that it has, it has offered me immense relief when I had n literally no other choice. So, an offering. It's definitely one of the options. So. Yeah. And June? So, um, <clears throat> one, I guess the one dilemma I or predicament I feel is um, I started an initiative called the Kansas City Drawdown Society. Um, are you both familiar with Paul, the work that Paul edited, Paul Hawken edited the book Drawdown? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we did a pilot group, study group with that the Pachamama Alliance created um, a year ago. And then we have been doing introductions to Drawdown. And I've probably led about 20 introductions to Drawdown in the last year. I pretty much overextended myself. And uh, it's emblematic of a re recurring issue for me, which is I finding a way to take care of myself and the impulse to give my life uh, in service of the situation that we're facing and I've just taken a month off to sort of recover and regroup and I'm really uncertain how to take care of just the basic physical needs of life in I think you know two people living in a house you know the way that the whole system is set up all the just the logistics of self-care and shopping and taking care of my clients and then having anything left over to do something that seems problem realistic um i do come at the situation with enormous um grief and presence to possibility we have so much untapped potential but when it comes to a personal level of how do I restructure what I'm doing that that I'm more effective than I'm being both in terms of the organization that we're creating that is floundering and um, also in balancing my own life that's kind of where I struggle and my um the trio, the three of us that started this organization, um, you know, none of us have really 
a lot of experience starting organizations and we've got a lot of good pieces, but we don't, yeah. The, yeah, so it's working in groups on anything. It's like, I'm willing to work 20 hours a week on top of everything else I'm doing and the other two, you know, it, we, yeah. Anyway, you, you all know just exactly what it is, I'm sure, in the group that you're working in, it's like how to how to balance self care and um, working in groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to acknowledge that we've got a little over a minute left, and I'm fine having our responses to you, June. Do that. So. Um, Laura, are you inclined? Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, one of the things that I've I've been trying to really cultivate because I kind of run into that overachiever on the side of um, always saying yes to stuff that people ask of me um, is, and and part of this comes from just um, basically having a, a meltdown a couple of years ago. Um, and I ended up taking a year off and just living on EI, and, which is our form of unemployment insurance. And um, it's just being really selective about what I say yes to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard because you want to get involved. Yeah, I, I know that draw, that feeling. And it, it, it comes from a place of urgency and it comes from a place of caring and love. And those are all good things. Um, and um, Laura, if I may interrupt you for just a moment, I'm going to need to break away again and get myself back. And, I, and that gives us less than a minute for you to finish up and come back. And June, I would just like to invite, um, I'm not very available uh, until around the 4th of July and then beyond. I'm going to be sending out some resources that might be of use. So a couple of podcasts with people who founded Extinction Rebellion and how they're integrating, weaving in deep self-care and really love between the people in, in it. So I'm hoping that that will be useful in the interim. What, I'm like, what I'd like to invite you to is after the 4th of July, for after the next, um, during the next session of this, this meeting, uh, I'd like to get together with you on, on, a, on a Zoom call, and, and hopefully we could, we could go much deeper. I'm so sorry that this was not much time for you. Thanks, and likewise, it wasn't much time for you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We've got to talk to the guy who's running this thing, because there's just not enough time. <laughs> I don't know what his thing is. I've... It's, you're doing an awesome job, Dean. This is a, it's a difficult format, but it's one that we have to learn to do well. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> I'll see you back in a minute. Okay. All right. It looks like we have uh, just about everybody back. No, we don't actually. We, we finished slightly early. So. Okay. All right. Ah, here we come. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We, I noticed that we have, excuse me, one new person. We have Jay Early here with us. And uh, Jay's the person that I was talking about at the beginning of the session. And he will be uh, joining us for an hour's worth of uh, a very provocative and I believe very empowering proposal that he has to, uh, to offer to us all. And so if you um, find yourself engaged with and very interested in the idea of having a support group in your life or if even if you already have one um, there's a distinct possibility that Jay will be able to offer a, a remarkable body of work that he's been working on for quite some time um, about how to deepen and how to uh, facilitate the work in a support group of just about any kind. So we'll be starting that, that up in um, about 10 minutes time when we end this officially, this 
this part. So Jay, welcome, and we'll just uh, finish up this stuff and and get get back to you. Um, and and welcome here. Please please uh, join in, and I'm glad you're here. Um, what I'd like to ask is. <clears throat> Is there, we don't have time again for uh, any extensive sharing from, from everyone uh, and really from a very, very few people we could uh, uh, invite a few short shares. I would be really curious uh, what you might have been um, moved by inspired by, challenged by, what, uh, how you might have been contributed to by your partners. If there's something that, that moved you in particular that you could share briefly with us, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and, and let us know. I'm gonna jump right in. <laughs> yeah. Um, I told them both, but I, I got partnered with Michael and Leon Lane, sorry, um, and they, they're both um, just really inspirational and deep and insightful. And it's, um, it's always just, it, it feels very optimistic to talk to people who are going to be, have more control and power um, and then, and, and, are, and are in a good place. And um, it just gives some optimism to such a bleak place. <laughs> so I just wanna, yeah. And then, Anyhow. Great, thank you. And I, I got your message in the chat that you'll need, be needing to leave at uh, what's 10.30 our time in Pacific time. And uh, uh, just a reminder for everyone, if you are interested in Jay's presentation and, and his offer, actually, um, I will be recording this and posting the recording of, of his talk with the the other recording of this main body of the meeting. Is there anyone else who would like to share how you were impacted or moved by your time with others? I'll share. I was longing to have more time to contribute to my partners. Um, and I loved the opportunity to have a structure that is simply an invitation to do that. I really appreciate that, Dean, that structure that you gave us, Pete, and um, we'll get better and better at it. And I felt uh, a very profound um, need met of a certain kind of intimacy that even though it was brief and uh, It's so uncommon to be able to talk about from the context of the, all the things that we've talked about and that we're facing, um, just to be able to be open-hearted and authentic um, was truly a gift and um, hard to even articulate what a deep what a deep need that is. That's uh, so I'm grateful, and that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Yeah, June. Thank you very much. I I'm inspired by your words, and I hear you in terms of me being the person who's putting together the format for each of these meetings, and I I absolutely hear you and share that desire to have more of that intimacy, more of the time that is really set up for us to to interact in a good way. <clears throat> is there anyone else who would like to share about how they were moved or particularly connected with uh, their partners in that last conversation? Hi, uh, I'll just say that I felt a camaraderie and that we were all in the same boat. You know, and, and on the one hand, it was a little discouraging, like, oh, um, 
if we're all in the same boat, maybe it's less likely that my situation is going to get solved, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, but I did feel uh, connected through our common predicament. So. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for me, it was great to, um, to have ears and minds hear my predicament and uh, to be able to hear it through the lens of uh, really understanding and grappling with predicament. And so, yeah, the, the, the advice that uh, I got from Catherine and Susan really, really resonated and um, it, it, it was... It was meaningful, so thanks for that. Ian, I'm I'm curious since you're um, new to calls, I'm I'm wondering how you're doing, how this is showing up for you. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Um, it's all I think I'm, so I'm I'm kind of fairly kind of aware of all the stuff that's happening. Um, the actual sort of like collapse type stuff, I haven't. Sort of, I'm kind of aware of it. I haven't read loads of it. I've kind of, but I'm kind of aware of it. So yeah, I've been thinking about it quite a lot recently, actually, particularly in the past kind of weeks. And um, and I actually signed up for this a while ago, but because of the time difference and stuff, I haven't been able to make any of the calls before. Uh, but this one just popped into my inbox today, so it came along. And um, yeah, it's it's good to kind of um, yeah to think about this stuff. Um, I, I've been doing the Extinction Rebellion in London, so we, there is kind of quite a lot of support around that as well. Uh, but but somehow it, a lot of the time is spent kind of organising things. Um, so there's not always uh, time to just kind of you know just just think about this side of it um and and particularly the idea that actually what if what if we what if it doesn't work or, or what if even if we do achieve our aims in the uk um that's just one country and that's something that's not often talked about um and might not be a good thing to bring up <laughs> yeah well, Ian, it's it's a, just a pleasure to have you on, and I appreciate there's a there's a sobriety in the center of what you're saying, and I'm actually moved by just just having you say what you're saying. Um, what I'm what I'm inclined to offer from my experience when you're saying that is, I don't know that there's any other conversation to be had. And that, that, that I'm, now I'm letting you know a little bit about the dilemma that I brought up with my two partners, you know, which you heard a little bit about in the, in the demonstration of it. I thank you so much for, for letting yourself be here today and also letting yourself drop into those levels of feeling with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for perhaps one more. Okay. I again just um, I'm very humbled in in this environment. I'm so pleased and blessed to be in this in this environment with you. Uh, this is something that no human being has had to grapple with before our time. And uh, try as we might, I think very few of the skills and tools and capacities that we grew up with, that we thought was all it would take to be successful in life, all those tools and capacities and so on are falling far short of what the scale is of this predicament. It is a pleasure and a privilege
to uh, to have allies and uh, and even friends on this path. And even though our time together and sharing is cut way too short by that guy who's running this webinar, um, I'm sure we can talk with him and convince him to give us a bit more time next time. I'm very, very pleased and honored to be a part of this. And uh, I'll be going to uh, Greece in a couple days to be in a workshop with Jem Bendel and, uh, and uh, Katie Carr, his partner. And um, I'm really looking forward to that level of participation and, and partnership in this conversation. And I will bring back all that I can to our next meeting together. I thank you all for your participation. And uh, please keep your feedback coming about what's working, what's not working, what you'd like to suggest or see more of. It's a pleasure to bring as much of those things as I can to this. And you are helping me to evolve this into something that will hopefully be a standalone, strong offering for people in the future. Um, this might be a good time to unmute yourself and just say a final farewell. And for those who are sticking around, please do stick around. I will probably find some nice piece of music or something. Uh, we're going to take a bio break and uh, just a few minutes after 30. So at, at 34 or something, we will we'll start up with Jay. So uh, for those that are leaving, farewell. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. And for those that are staying, we'll be back up in uh, just a very few minutes, three, three or four minutes. Bye, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Good to see you all. Thank you. Bye. Dean, will you be recording the session with um, Jay for those of us that have to disappear? I will. Thank uh, you. Can, can I make an, an announcement? Yes. Um, if you guys go to culturalrevolutioncenter.org, um, one of the uh, authors and scientists that Dean um, included uh, some of his work named Joe Brewer, who lives in Costa Rica. He's having a five-day workshop on managing planetary collapse. Um, and then when we're talking about wanting to come together and be connected, I think it would be a really neat opportunity. He's got an off-the-grid permaculture ranch where he's going to be having people like us talking about what it means to manage planetary collapse. Um, so if anybody is interested, I'm seriously considering going to that. and. Uh, I'd like to know if anybody else is too. So send me a message or something. Great, thank Sorry. you, Susan. I'll be sure to put a link up with the final posting of this as well. Thank you so okay. much for that. Dean, will you tell me again what the Facebook group is? I know it's sure. somewhere. Sure, it's Deep Academy. Thank you. You out of here, Catherine? Bye. I'll be right back. Okay, bye. And Jill, and you're out of here. You got a birthday. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Dean. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for just being real. I'll see y'all later. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. <laughs> I don't know how to leave the meeting. <laughs> okay. It should be in the bottom of your screen there on the right hand side. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I can't leave. <laughs> well, Jay, good to see your face. So glad you're here. Yeah. I'm glad I glad I got in on the end of it to see what a lovely group you have. Uh, they're just great folks. I've, I've got to find a way to not, I don't want to make anyone wrong, but you know, we've got about 90 people that are not here. And uh, I, I just so want to inspire them to do whatever they can to be on this call for the, the remaining two sessions. So anyway. Enough about that. 
It's a symptom of disconnection. <laughs> <laughs> it's not making anyone wrong. It's just our, you know, distraction, too many things going on. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for sharing your birthday with us, Laura. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I... You know, I, I have a feeling, Jay, that we have approximately the number of people that we're going to have. Okay. And so um, what I'd like to do is just uh, start back up officially. So again, uh, this is kind of part two, the unofficial part two of session four in a six session series of deep adaptation in times of collapse. And the focus of for today's uh, episode has been about reconnection with others in the context of, you know, we, what got us here is disconnection from self, others, and earth. We've been uh, taking this particular 90 minute session to really focus on our reconnection with others. And uh, I connected in a podcast interview on the poetry of predicament recently with Jay Early. And I'm, I'm just so pleased, uh, Jay, that it happened to coincide with your generation of a, uh, what you at the, the onset called a, uh, a social movement that you would want, wanting to um, germinate and, and hopefully grow into something of a large scale movement. And uh, I know you've included me in a, in a bit of the um, kind of formulation group and I appreciate that. And, and I know that you're very open to uh, having this be a living uh, creation, something that's very much a malleable and uh, has, has a big growing edge on it. And I, I'd like to just introduce you a little bit in terms of what also caught my eye about your body of work. I've been uh, wanting to put together the most uh, easy to assimilate, easy to learn, and scalable tools that I can find for people who are collapse aware. That's more or less the kind of the mission of my little body of work. And one of the uh, most <clears throat> simple but profound pieces that I found was uh, what's often called um, internal family systems. And I know that that's something that's been at the core of your body of work and books and so on for, for years now. And so this is also, I'm hoping you're going to include some um, aspect of how that can be an included element in this notion of having support groups, uh, uh, a loosely affiliated network of, of support groups that might go nationally and internationally, perhaps even globally, uh, because this kind of tool, this internal family systems, as I can see it, is, is one of the most powerful and scalable and easily, easily learned tools that I've seen that uh, creates a sense of bonding in the group and a sense of personal healing for any individual who takes part and, um, uh, and can go as far as to be healing in terms of the trauma, residual trauma that we might be carrying. It's an extraordinary uh, kind of elemental tool at the center of this thing. So I'd like you to, to start wherever you'd like to start, Jay. And I know that the main point that you're going to be bringing up today is sharing this notion of how to create uh, support groups in a good way. And I'm hoping that you will include some amount of uh, just a, a, at least a brief introduction to what this internal family systems tool is and how it might be a part of some support groups as well. So Jay, thanks so much okay. for sitting through that long in introduction. And uh, thanks for joining us today in the um, deep adaptation in times of collapse. Welcome. Okay, thank you. So um, yes, I will, um, since you're asking, I will definitely put in a little bit about IFS and uh, what I have to say. Um, <clears throat> 
you know, I've, um, I've been concerned about the state of the world since at least the 1980s. And um, I was a, an activist in the peace movement in the 80s. And, um, and then later, um, wrote a book called Transforming Human Culture, which is really about the, the subtitle is actually more descriptive. It's social evolution and the planetary crisis. And uh, in that in that book, I kind of took a look at the whole sweep of um, human history and s saw a number of trends that have gotten us to where we are now, um, the modern industrial era. And um, what I what I see is that the stuff we're dealing with, the possibility of collapse and all of the craziness that's going on, I see it as symptoms of the end of the industrial, the, the modern industrial era. Um, and that we are in the process of transforming um, our entire culture and society into whatever comes next. And um, there's a lot of pretty good ideas out there about what needs to come next. Um, and so I, I'll, I'll just mention that briefly, because what I actually want to focus on is how do we get to what comes next? Um, let me see. This is very interesting. I, I have a PowerPoint presentation, but um, I guess I will use it some, but I also realize that it kind of makes it more impersonal when I'm doing that. But um, let me let me pull as some of that up at least. Um, where is that? And Jay, I've just uh, made you a co-host. And so you should now have the tools probably at the bottom of your screen to share screen if you'd like to. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, got oh, it. Good. Okay. So can you all see that? Uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, so um, I probably don't need to go into my history. You've kind of, we've kind of gone over most of that. So we all know the, the big problems that are, we're dealing with in the world. You guys are probably more than most, so I'm not going to go over that. But the, the point, as I just made, is that I see that these, this is all happening now because the modern industrial era is no longer viable. And so we actually need whole system transformation of virtually every aspect of our, our society. And this has been called The Great Turning, originally by Joanna Macy, and then David Corton wrote a book called The Great Turning. And so that's how I view what's going on. Um, and the, our modern industrial worldview, and here are some of the elements of it, science and rational thought, technology, competition for power, seeing everything through a machine consciousness, seeing us as separate from each other and part of the mechanistic universe. Um, now this um, has been going on for maybe four or 500 years. And in, in many ways, it at least it has brought at least some of us knowledge, individuality, freedom, comfort. So in, um, of course, a lot of people got left out of that, but in many ways, the modern industrial, is, it, it's not that it was a mistake. It actually was you know, what we needed at the time. But now the very fact, its very successes have brought us to the point where, um, it's breaking down, as you all are well aware of. And that's because of the incredible technical power we have now, our large population, our ability to exploit the earth. Late stage, late stage capitalism has gotten out of control and leading to corporations controlling our governments. So we need a vision of a healthy transformed society that would be what we would have in the next era of social evolution. And I think we need this vision to inspire people and provide a broad basis for organizing. And um, so uh, there's, I could say a lot about this, but I'm just gonna say briefly, it feels like the new society that is being born 
Um, by the way, it may sound funny, like the new society that's being born, meanwhile, everything's falling apart. But I, I think those actually go together. The falling apart, hopefully, will lead to this new society, which will, and we have the, you know, the rough outlines of what it has to be, it has to be based on cooperation, interconnectedness, global consciousness, uh, some sort of spiritual um, recognition, recognition that we are part of a living earth and universe, and it will involve cultural and racial diversity, social justice, human scale institutions, reverence for the earth, and probably many other things. Um, now, I, um, there's actually a lot of really good stuff that's been written about what this new society might look like. Uh, I've probably read 20 different books around this. And I'm, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna focus on that today, but I just wanna say that it's there. And, and by the way, I don't mean that this is a, um, a done deal. Here's the vision, now we just have to create it. Of course, we can't know exactly what the new society will be like. Um, it has to be discovered by all of us together as a movement and by experimenting and seeing what works. But we have enough of an outline of it that, um, that we have an idea of what, what it could be. And it could be a, a beautiful place to live as opposed to what we're dealing with now. So I'm proposing that we need a social movement for the great turning. Um, and this would, and by the way, I, I'm not proposing to start this from scratch. In, in some sense, this movement is already going. There's already a tremendous number of different aspects of it that are up and running. Um, but it's um, not very, it's hardly known at all. It's not very well organized. And so part of my proposal is to try to make it, make it work better. I'll, I'll get to that. So this social movement is working for a transformed society at all levels, on, focused on, most movements focus on a single issue, which is fine, you know, that's needed. Uh, but this one would need to focus on multiple social, ecological, and political issues. I think it needs to be personal and spiritual, as well as political and social. Um, I think it needs to focus on changing consciousness and worldview as well as social structures. It needs to, um, you know, obviously it needs to be inclusive of all aligned organizations and movements and working toward a planetary civilization. And here's, I already mentioned this. Not only is the movement um, not very well coordinated, it's hardly known. Um, you know, the no, and of course, in one sense, that's, may be appropriate right now because the movements that are getting to be known is the climate change movement. And that is probably the most urgent thing on the planet. And so there's um, a, a fairly large substantial movement uh, trying to deal with the climate crisis and that's absolutely needed and totally appropriate. And that's part of, that's only part of what I'm seeing as this larger movement for the great turning. Um, so I'm proposing actually two things. One is to create um, an activist organization that's dedicated to the great turning, which will be built on study action groups. That's why <clears throat> Dean was mentioning um, my emphasis on support groups. Um, but I also think that we need to catalyze this great turning movement. Um, we need to help organizations that actually are part of it to see themselves as part of it in this larger context. Um, um, I think we need to do some coordination among these existing organizations and also to begin to bring this movement to public attention. Um, so, um, you know what? Let me um, not just chat at you. I'm gonna stop for a moment. And um, just with this brief introduction, let me throw it open to anyone who wants to make comments. Um, I'd love to hear um, 
anything that's been stimulated by what I've said so far or any questions that have come up for you. So anyone who wants to, please jump in. Hi. 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 Um, hi. Uh, one thing that I heard you say, I, I've been doing a fair amount of reading about the situation and um, uh, so, sorry, let me, let me just start my video here. Um, I've been doing some reading and I think a unifying principle for this movement is the shift from separation to system, a systemic view of life. Yeah. Seeing life as a, a system. And um, you're, you're talking about involving a lot of, you know, people who are in their silos, who are, you know, lots of individual groups that have been doing their best to solve the problem from their issue, their focus on their issue. And it seems like um, bringing in the systemic view is a way to have each of these silos find their place in the big picture. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just want to that. And, and you may have already thought of that, but um, I just want to mention that because it seems like that's what the great turning needs to accomplish. We need to stop seeing our reality as these discrete, isolated individual issues or individual people, it, you know, and really see that who we are is a, is a system of relationships. You know? Yep. I totally agree. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Well, I think uh, following up on that, um, the idea of using like an ecological model for uh, these types of groups and the way they connect, um, when you think about ecosystems and the different populations that exist within them and, and interact to, you know, create healthy ecosystems. Um, we, we have this model in our minds because we come from these Western societies that stuff has to be this top-down hierarchy. And, and so really feeling and living that, that um, network mindset, um, I think is, is a way to kind of get past the feeling that we're all just, you know, that we're not all rowing in the same boat. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think there's a lot of that, that frustration out there that, um, you know, if we, if we would all just do what so-and-so wants us to do, or if we would all just, you know, get on the climate change boat and, or all just get on the social justice boat or, you know, whatever it is that, and, and instead look at it as an ecosystem of um, human um, activity and human thought and feeling that, and, that is ultimately driving us toward connection with each other and with the, and with the earth. Um, I think that might help with some of that, uh, that tendency to kind of view the, the fragmentation as a negative thing rather than as inherent in. Right. Rather than as diversity, which is something that brings yeah. power. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, I'll jump in. I am thrilled beyond measure to hear what you're presenting here. And I think men, I'll speak for myself, but I assume that many people on this call have been thinking the same things for 20 years and not quite having articulated. I think for me, I get stopped on a personal level when I think about the needs of, of the systemic level of change and previously couldn't see any way we could access that. But I'm starting to see now that we can access that. And um, I'm, what, what comes to mind is uh, um, Joanna Macy talking about how we are discovering 
a whole new way. Like we've been on the way to destroying ourselves for a long time and that, that we're discovering um, a whole new relationship to ourselves and to each other and to the earth. Right. And um, so for me, the word discovery is up because I created a vision statement really for my own work that um, I want to create a team and a partnership that will be capable of holding on to and acting on a vision that we use the climate crisis to discover, not only solve the climate crisis, but to discover our capacity to bring forth a world that works for all or um, an environmentally sustainable, spiritually just, a spiritually fulfilling and socially just human presence. I mean, there's different ways of languaging it, but- That's the Pachamama, right, yeah. That's Pachamama, yeah. I, I've just, for those of you who it means anything to you, I've facilitated more than 60 Awakening the Dreamer symposiums in 26 cities. I've been, so- wow. What, yeah, so what, what the Awakening the Dreamer Symposium is a compendium of um, thought leaders and spiritual elders who are addressing the issues of the great turning. And um, so discovery is a key word that stands out for me. Uh, and the other thing that comes to mind is how um, the, the piece that building on what, uh, was it Laura or, or Laura that just said this, that, um, that we are the universe in the form of a human and that we don't know yet ourselves as the universe in the form of a human, that, and that, that, called, that brings forth the notions of the eagle and the condor prophecies of the Americas, that the eagle or the eagle cultures are the linear what you put in your slide the right the, the modern industrial yeah industrial growth consciousness um that that's a i see that as a branch of evolution and our in the branch of evolution that stayed connected to a spiritual relationship with the earth and the universe that now in the eagle and the condor prophecies this is the time when those two come together and create uh, an unpredictable uh, future. And there's more I'd love to say. I love this. I love what you're doing. I'm excited. Good. I also, hey. I've also led um, the Kansas City Eco Team campaign 20 years ago where we, we did study action circles. We put uh, 600 households, like roughly 1,500 people in Kansas City through a a four month program to learn how to live a more ecologically conscious, uh, lower their measurably lower their environmental impact. So I have lots to say to you. I'm excited to meet you. I'm thrilled by this opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you. I love your enthusiasm. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back and, uh, okay. So, um, so some of the comp existing, co so the, this social movement for a great turning, um, as I say, already exists in some sense, but it's, um, I think many of the components of it, um, the groups and people who are part of it may not even see themselves that way. So there are all the single issue movements, especially related to the climate crisis, but many other important single issue movements um, um, and I see those as ultimately part of this larger movement. Um, and I think part of our work is to help them see themselves in that way as well, not because they should change the work, the great work they're doing on the issues that they care about, but because there's also something larger going on. And so um, the women's movement, I think, is going to be a very important part of this great turning movement. Um, as women take their power, it's it's very exciting to me what's what's going on uh, at the um, electoral level. And but I suspect that as women fully come into their power, they're going to really power this movement in, in very important ways. And of course, the environmental movement is an important part of this. Um, the progressive movement, uh, which is more focused on electoral politics and um, and other things 
is also an important part of this. And then there are many groups that are creating interesting social and ecological innovations. Um, and those will um, are becoming models for what um, this healthy society that hopefully we're moving toward. And there are other initiatives that are they're actually focused on the great turning, although they might call it the great transition or something else. And so those are all, and, and probably a lot more that I'm not even including on this list. Um, let's see. One, one of the, um, I'm especially interested in Extinction Rebellion. It's, it's uh, right now one of these single issue movements about um, climate, but they have, I understand, a longer term goal of social transformation and um, a spiritual foundation and a, a real interest in making sure that the culture of their movement is consistent with their goals for society. And just a lot of things that make, make me very interested in them as, and so I'm actually starting to get involved in the, the local Bay Area version of Extinction Rebellion here to see where that goes. Um, and I wanna make, make it clear that I'm not proposing that I, Jay Early, I'm gonna start this, you know, anything here. Uh, I've just got some ideas and I also have some skills about leading small groups, but there's a whole lot of capacities that are needed for this that I don't have, that other people are gonna have to supply and probably lots of other ideas too. So don't see me as the leader of this. I'm just somebody who's putting out some ideas um, and, and trying to start um, an organization, but it's way bigger than me and I need lots of lots of help if this is going to go anywhere. So let me give you um, my vision for the movement, an eight-part vision. Um, one is um, the obvious wake people up to the danger and urgency of the moment. Two is protect the earth, people, and democracy. That's already going on. That's, that's a lot of these single issue movements are doing that. They're absolutely necessary. Um, and hopefully they will um, in time see themselves in this larger context. Um, we need to provide a vision, as I mentioned, a vision of a healthy society, which you could call a regenerative society, and a vision of how to get there. And again, not because we're going to do it exactly the way any vision says, but because it inspires people and says, you, you know, if you, you know, the danger is, oh, I should actually go to, well, let me go ahead to a, uh, one of my, here we go. So if you look at breakdown, which you guys are all familiar with, of course, here, is it, too much breakdown leads to collapse and enormous suffering and destruction. And we may not be able to prevent that. But on the other hand, not enough breakdown just allows people to continue uh, life as usual or you know, be in denial, nothing's really happening. I can still live my life the way I've always lived it. The right amount of breakdown in the right circumstance can wake people up to take action and move toward a healthy society. And the movement that I'm proposing um, could do that. It could provide the hope and something for people to do so that when the breakdown happens, um, instead of going into denial or turning to right-wing demagogues or whatever else people might do, that they can actually be inspired to, to step up and, and be part of something that's moving toward a healthy society. So hopefully we can, we can provide that so that when, as the collapse happens, people have a place to go, a place to turn. So, um, so that's number three. And then, um, as the movement develops, in, an important part of it is going to be that the culture of the movement itself reflects the healthy society that we're trying to create. So that it's a, you could say it's a regenerative movement culture with loving, empowered members. And then part of what needs to happen, I think, is that we need to help transform people's worldviews and values. And that's somewhat a little separate from actually waking them up because, you know, there are many people who aren't necessarily awake to what's going on, but actually do have the values 
and the worldview of a new the new that we need for the new society. So we need both. We need people to be awake and ready to take action, but we also need maybe even a larger number of people to begin to have at least beginning to transform their worldview, their values, their consciousness in the direction of the new society that needs to be born. And then number six is that there are, uh, we need to, and this is already happening, uh, this one especially, there are lots of social and ecological innovations that are going on, like, like people in education creating um, schools with, you know, that are student-centered and whole person education. And uh, there's very interesting ecological innovations that are going on. The Bioneers Conference every year, luckily, is right in my backyard. And uh, so I've been to it many times. And there's just amazing innovations ecologically that are going on that, that, that can provide models for to scale up into um, ultimately the healthy society that we need to create. So there's tons of that already going on and there needs to be even more of it and um, more attention paid to those um, innovative people who are uh, pointing the way toward this healthy society. And then um, as the movement, as time goes on, the movement needs to, you know, really focus on collaboration of the different parts of it and um, hopefully grow to be large and powerful enough until finally number eight, uh, hopefully we will gain enough power that we can actually transform the governments and the economies in the world. So this is sort of a grand vision, but sorry, that's just the way I think. <laughs> Jay, if I may, I'd, I'd love to just chime in for a moment. Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Um, I, I want to give you the punchline a bit early here, so, so it might shift the way you're listening to this. Why, why Jay's here is not just to tell us about this, this new proposed movement that he's talking about. He's also uh, going to be offering a cer some number of, of sessions like this Zoom session that we're doing six times for this webinar of deep, ad deep adaptation, uh, Jay's going to be offering some number of, of uh, Zoom sessions with interested people about what, is, what does it take to create this kind of support group. Some of the initial stages or steps that we might take if you've got an already existing group that you would like to take to the next level, or you would just like to create a, a support group or a tribe or whatever in your neighborhood, in your family, in your workplace, these, the skills, the distinctions and so on that Jay's gonna be offering in this series, he'll be giving us the details about that, um, I, th I think are extraordinary. So this has really put, puts meat on the bones. It's not just describing what if, and now you all go and do your best and see you later. He's <laughs> actually inviting us to uh, join with him in some number of sessions to learn more about it and to start to get uh, in, engaged in the process of creating our own. So just wanted to shift your listening in case what you think you're listening to is just a description of a proposal that he has for the world at large, and then we get off the phone and that's it. I, want, I would like you to listen differently and just see, let that, let that stew inside you as he says what he says now for the next few minutes, and uh, see if that's something that you would like to participate in. So, Jay, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to be sure people were clear where we were headed. And okay. Yeah, thanks, Dean. That's probably a, a good, good idea about how I should do this presentation so thank you um and i'll get there in a minute so yeah, yeah. Some, of the, some of the qualities of this movement um it of course it needs to be diverse in terms of race culture gender class and so on um it needs to be intergenerational um not just the oldies like me but we need young people probably actually the young people leading the movement um, it needs to be spiritually oriented, although not sectarian in any sense. 
it needs to be experimental in the sense that we are, we're trying things out. We don't feel like we have all the answers and we know that. And, um, and so there may be different strands of the movement that will try out different approaches and, and we'll keep together and, you know, keep, keep in contact and see what works. And as I mentioned um, a couple times already, the process needs to be consistent with the goals. Uh, so now, now I'm also, in addition to this sort of vision of a movement, I'm also proposing to start an organization that would be part of the movement. Um, and hmm, maybe I'll skip over this right now. All right, let me get to the study action groups. And by the way, I'm calling these study action groups um, partly because it's a term that Joanna Macy's used, but they're really more than just study and action, as you'll see. So I'm, I'm proposing that this organization that I'm in the process of creating, and hopefully not just me, actually Dean's part of this too, uh, as well as some other people, um, but the the basis for this organization would be these small study action groups. I mean, that's not all there will be. There'll have to be, you know, um, chapters in metropolitan areas and task groups and lots of other things. But the 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 guts of it will be these small study action groups that will hopefully be co cohesive, committed, long term. Um, that they will be the basis for the the healthy movement culture, uh, and that we will be not just being support groups, but really developing ourselves to be healthy, empowered activists for whatever um, kind of activism we want to participate in. And by the way, when I say activism, I don't just mean getting in the streets, even though that's an important part of it. I mean, all kinds of other things like creating ecological innovations, creating social innovations, um, and many other things. So um, how you would be an activist is, is much broader than the usual meaning of the word activist. So in these um, study action groups, among the things that would go on would be capacity building. We would be developing our capacities for successfully building and strengthening the movement and for engaging with the public. And you can imagine all the different kinds of capacities that are needed for that for different people. Not everybody has to have all these capacities, but public speaking, how to run a meeting well, how to talk to people um, whose ideas are different from ours and on and on and on. There's a whole bunch of different capacities that we need to develop as individuals to be successful as an organization and as a movement. Uh, group, group bonding is going to be very important in these study action groups because um, I want them to be a place where people are excited to go. And I'm going to meet with these people that I really care about and I'm close to and we're dealing with these, you know, very important issues and connecting with each other in deep personal ways so that we will love to stay together, you know, even if we aren't ready yet to take action, although some of us may be ready. Um, study will be another important part of it. We'll be studying various topics needed for the movement to be successful, understanding different aspects of a healthy society, understanding evolution, understanding um, how social change works, and on and on and on. Um, then there will be a focus on personal growth for us as activists, working on ourselves psychologically and spiritually and in other ways to become more effective activists, not only developing capacities, but working through um, blocks that prevent us from being empowered and um, creative and successful in the ways that we need to be. Uh, also, there, um, these groups will be a place for deep sharing with uh, the kind of thing that uh, Dean is doing with you folks. Uh, listening deeply to each other, sharing our hopes and our passions, our insecurity and our pain, um, our trauma, uh, finding ways to work through that, all those things. Uh, then there's communication, learning how to communicate successfully within the group and also without, with people that were recruiting for the movement or, you know, just engaging with the public in various ways. There's tremendous 
things that need to be learned about how to successfully communicate. And then taking action together. When an action project appeals to uh, most of the people in a study action group, it will either act together or maybe as part of a larger movement action, or maybe even joining with another existing group like Extinction Rebellion in their actions. Um, so let's see. So the idea, so, so let me just, um, let me come out of here. And so I can talk, see you again while I'm talking. So, you know, where, where I came to this is I looked around uh, as much as I could tell about the people who are aware of, you know, what's going on in the planet and the critical need for, um, for transformation. And there's, and what I saw was that there was a lot of stuff about how we as individuals can relate to this and, you know, um, what kind of spiritual openness we need to be able to um, figure out what to do. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm really focused on uh, is life purpose. I feel like each person needs to find their own calling and how they're going to contribute to the movement. Um, and then there are lots of um, festivals and conferences and all kinds of things where people get together and great things happen. And then everybody goes back to their lives. And it feels like we not only need to come together, but we need to come together in a sustained way. And that's why I'm talking about a movement and an, and an organization that would be part of that. Um, that that's the I think the most important thing is that we need to come together and not just temporarily, not just to teach each other, but to actually be part of something that's sustainable, that's long term, that's really aimed at um, the great turning. So um, let me throw it open again to you folks and hear your comments and thoughts at this point. I have a question. Yes. Okay, so um, I I moved to Costa Rica, and this country doesn't have a military, and they base their wealth on the measurements of the well-being of their people instead of a gross domestic product, right. and things like that, which to me makes perfect common sense and apparently does to the people here who run the government. So, I mean, to me, a lot of what you're saying is, you know, like, of course, um, what I'm having a hard time with is how do we reconcile the movement in this direction with the severity of the collapse that we're facing because of climate change with, you know, ocean acidification and all the sober data that we hear about, how are we even going to, how is this viable when survival is questionable? Good question. Um, well, I think we need to do both. I don't think it's one or the other. I mean, obviously, there's a real urgency about climate change. Absolutely. Um, and um, I think, we, you know, as a larger movement, that's going to be that that may be the primary focus right now, because it has to be because if we don't take care of that, we're not going to survive long enough to do anything else. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, so I, I agree Then that may, you know, we'll see how it develops, but that may be the, what will need to be the, the main focus, uh, at least of many, many parts of this movement for now, because of the incredible urgency of that. I agree. But I, I would like to see that done within this larger understanding that that's not just, we don't just need to get emissions down and everything's going to be fine. No, there's much bigger problems than that. Um, I mean, not, not, maybe not as urgent, but bigger. So that's the way I see it. Right. I'd like to request, I can really feel our time is kind of drawing close to a close sooner than I would like. And I'm, I'm hoping that you will, you know, speak your invitation to people with great specificity and know that this will go out to all okay. uh, roughly 110 people in the webinar. And uh, so what, what is the, it that you are suggesting and offering here? 
Well, actually, two things. First of all, just it, I'll just say first, any way that you would like to be part of this organization that is starting to develop, um, you, you know, just if you're, ne you're not even sure of what it might be, but you're just interested, you, you, you know, you'd like to be part of it, you know, contact me, we'll talk, we'll see how that might work. But the specific thing that I'm starting right now is the, the first study action group. It's going to be a pilot group. It will be, um, I mean, ideally, these study action groups will be mostly in person. But to get started, I'm going to be doing one by video conference so I can, you know, draw from people all over the world. Um, and so, um, actually, we're going to need more than one pilot group. But the, the reason I'm calling it a pilot is because it's going to be um, experimental to see what are the best ways to have a study action group really work. I mean, I've done, I've led groups all my life. I'm a very good group leader, um, but I, I haven't led this kind of group exactly. And, and it's not even going to be me leading the group exactly. I mean, I guess initially it will be, but these, these study action groups should eventually become self-led, you know, with maybe bringing in experts, you know, like for various processes that we might want to do. But right now, my proposal is that I am going to be starting a pilot study action group by video conference. Um, so it'll be one of these groups that I'm talking about with the aim is, and by the way, it's not going to be just, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you six weeks and then we're done. No, this is going to be a long-term group, hopefully. I mean, not that I'm asking a long-term commitment from anybody. That's not possible. It wouldn't make sense. But hopefully this, this and all the other study action group will be long-term committed, cohesive groups um, but right now we need one to get started to see how it works, what are the best ways to do it, how, you know, how to make all the different aspects of this group function well. So, uh, and that I'm going to be starting in the next few weeks. I've already got about 10 or 12 people who are interested in it. And it's not going to be much bigger than that, but I know I need a bigger number because not everybody was going to be able to make the same time slot. It will probably meet maybe every other week for an hour and a half or two hours. And I'm saying maybe because this is going to be up to the group. This, this is not the kind of thing where I'm putting out a class and it's all set up and you come and you pay me a certain amount and then, you know, we do it for eight weeks and it's done. This is going to be hopefully something ongoing. Uh, and um, hopefully many of the, many of you who are in this pilot group, once we you know, understand how to make it work, we'll go off and start your own study action groups in, in your local area with people around you that, you're, you know, that you can bring in or that you're close to. So that's, that's the idea. So Jay, what I, what I would like to ask of you is um, how can a person, particularly the people who are listening right now, but also the people who will be listening to the recording, how can they contact you to let you know how interested they are? Can you, and secondly, can you give them any more structure? Like, do you have a tentative number of sessions, particular day and time and in your Pacific time zone um, so that they can get a sense of if, they, if they're interested, can they get themselves to that particular um, so um, it's not going to be, as I said, it's not going to be a given number of sessions. It's hopefully going to be ongoing. Um, and what I'm going, I'm not, I'm not going to set up a time ahead of time. Once I have enough people who are interested, we're going to do a doodle poll and find the best time that'll work for every, for as many people as possible. Okay, so let me, probably, let me just. It will probably end up being a morning time in the Pacific time zone because that way it'll also be workable for people in Europe. Um, okay. Exactly when it'll be, I don't know yet. We'll see. So if a person is interested who's listening now or listening to this recording in the next week or so, and if they want to be sure to connect with you, let you know their level of interest, either uh, in the this initial pilot series of, of get-togethers to, to kind of get the ball rolling, and or if they would like to be involved in some other way, perhaps in the in that formulation group and so on, 
Um, I'm just curious, how could they get a hold of you? And I've, I've posted one of your emails. I hope it's the right one. Ah, it is. Good. There you go. Fantastic. So, yeah, there's my website. Well, that's my IFS website. There's my email address and my phone number. So um, best is email. Uh, just, con you know, early.j at gmail. Send me an email. Let me know what you're interested in. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. And if you're interested in, you know, these are various ways. We don't need to go through this, but um, any, any way that you, even if you're not interested in a study action group right now, if you'd like to contribute in any other way, just contact me and we'll, we'll talk about it and see where we go. Jay, I'm, I'm more than happy to put the, uh, the Google Doc link to your written proposal, which I know changes quite often. You've been really working on it. So I'll, oh, that would be great, yeah. I'll include the link to that document in the posting of this particular episode of, of our series. And I'm wondering, is there any other uh, link or any other information, contact information of any kind that you wanna be sure people have to be able to stay in touch with you and stay current? No, I think those are the two things. The the link to my, uh, by the way, what he's talking about is that I've written a proposal that's, you know, about 15, 20 pages. Um, so that's, there's a link to that. And then my email address is the only other thing. I think that's, um, oh, you know, and you asked me, I didn't even bring in IFS. I'm sorry. So. No, no, just that really, that's fine. I, I, I think it's, we're, we're, just comfortably coming in for landing and I, I would not want, like to add more. So thank you for thinking, okay. but uh, it's a later conversation. Okay. So um, Jay, I so appreciate your time and sharing this vision that you have and your expertise that you bring in terms of formulating groups and especially empowering um, uh, empowering groups to, to become far more bonding and self-healing, self-nurturing and growing themselves. And now having this activist focus is a, is a whole new dimension. And what I'm, uh, just to recap very briefly, what I'm hearing you say is that you're asking those who are interested to reach out to you, particularly by email, to, um, to let you know that, that yes, they want to be in the loop, they want to be included, and you will then send out update emails that will include, let's look at, let's do a poll and see when these sessions want to happen, when it works for the most people. And am I right in, in, in recalling that you were going to say this, this initial number of, some number of sessions, you're offering free of charge. You're just asking people to right. uh, join if they're interested at this point and that sort of thing. Yep. Yeah, no okay. charge. So uh, are there any other questions? I've just want, been wanting to recap for myself. Please, if there's anybody on the call who has a question, has a clarifying question, please chime right in. I just want to mention before I have to go, Jay, that my group, my team has been visioning what you're doing. This is the, the chart that we made six months ago, and we're 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 thinking about some some of the very elements that you have. Great. So uh, woven together, I'm just thrilled to meet you, and I'm thrilled to see what I can do as a part of your team. Thank you. Great. Love to have you. Any more questions? And All right. I, I just want to say, Dean, thank you so much for yeah. providing this opportunity for me to speak to your folks. I really appreciate it. You know, you're sure welcome. I look forward to seeing this thing grow. And uh, June, I, I love that you uh, just held up that image. And if there's a way that you could post an image of that on the on the Facebook group for us, I would sure appreciate it and put it in context a little bit. You're, you're muted. I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Dean. I, I want to just say also, Jay, what this, what, what, what stimulated for me, what you asked us originally is 
I remember Paul Hawkins' talk at Bioneers. I've never been to Bioneers, but it's in the Awakening the Dreamer Symposium, and how he talks about how this is the largest social movement that doesn't yet know itself as a movement. And oh, right, in blessed unrest, yeah. In blessed unrest, and that what I see is what you're, um, what you're aiming for is to hold the space for vision keepers, vi visionaries to come together who have been holding pieces of this vision in a way to actually, one of the components that you said is making, making us, helping, having a structure that helps us see ourselves as a movement. And anyway, I, I just see the connection between his talk and how, for those of you who don't know what that is, just to include people, is um, Paul Hawken gave a talk to, at Bioneers that um, he researched and discovered more than two million his team discovered more than 2 million organizations around the world that are actually working on environmental sustainability, social justice, human rights, civil rights, indigenous rights, and does, don't yet know themselves as a movement. And so it, it's this, I see Jay, that what you're creating here is uh, a, an opportunity for us to um, uh, be known to one another as a movement and to create together and so forth and so on. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any last minute input? Ian. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna say really quickly, I'm part of the Extinction Rebellion in, um, in England, in London. And um, I know at the moment there is a bit of an attempt there to try to link up some of the um, some of these other social movements into what they're calling a movement of movements. Oh, yeah. It'd be in the UK and, and centred more around kind of, um, I guess, like political and kind of social change. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, really great to have you on the call today. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. All right, it looks like we're just about to the end of this envelope of time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, Susan, I'll be sure to put the Joe Brewer uh, links and information in the email that will go out to everybody as well. Um, it, I would ask of you if you have the, the wherewithal to do it to post uh, whatever you'd like to post about the Joe Brewer event on the Facebook page, the Deep Academy Facebook page for us all. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. It, it dovetails perfectly with what Jay is talking about. Yeah. About yeah. going forward into this new, instead of seeing this as collapse and death and destruction only, but a, a rebirth. I, I really like hearing it that way and thinking about it that way. One. Even though I have yeah, but I'm going to try to focus on, <laughs> I'm going to think about it that way. Great. Well, thank you all so much for staying uh, the extra time. Jay, thank you for your presentation and your heart and passion in this. And I look forward to seeing you all when I get back from Greece and take good care. Safe travels. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. 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 Have a great time in Greece. Happy birthday, Laura. Hi, thank you, thank Dean, you. so much. Have a great trip. Richard, I'm glad you got to stay in. Good to see you.